but at the Tokyo Dome, I'm going to fight with everything I have, and you're going to have to kill me if you want to win. Beating you at your own game, Chris, is all I can do. You know, everyone knows I've been searching. I've been searching long and hard for the right challenger, for something to elevate this belt. I wanted to choose my own opponents. Every time I had tried, it failed. So when I first saw your video, Chris, <laughs> I couldn't help but feel excited. This was what I was waiting for. This was that big opportunity, not just for myself, not just for this belt, but this just became a huge opportunity for the entire pro wrestling world. We were set to make history together. I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> you know, when my career first started, of course, you know, I wanted to mirror your career, Chris. I wanted to be exactly like you. We were both from Winnipeg. We were Winnipeg boys. If someone from Winnipeg could do what you did, then I could do it too. I was from Winnipeg too. I was from a small town and I had big dreams and I saw you do it. I saw you claw your way up from the Indies. I saw you claw your way up through Mexico, through Japan, through ECW, WCW, and then finally, WWE. You became a megastar and you did it all on your own. That's exactly the kind of man I wanted to be. You've got it all wrong. Actually, I completely respect and even appreciate the gesture, Chris, of attacking me from behind. And that's where I praise you because your brain has always been your best asset. You've always been a smart man. You've always found a way to be the talk of the town, to be the bell of the ball. And I'm even gonna praise you for attacking me from behind, for making me bleed, because it's not something that I thought you would be willing to do. But what you did was what you had to. So when I say that I'm not going to respect you in this match, it's not because I don't respect you as a human. It's not because I don't respect you as a performer. As a performer, maybe now I respect you more than ever. It's that if I do respect you in this match, I'm gonna lose. You've taken this to a level that I never thought it would go. This has become a monster far beyond what I could have imagined. And the only way to fight this monster is to get a little bit ugly and physical. So Chris, when I say I can't respect you anymore, that's for my own safety. I've got a company to carry on my back. So when it comes to the Tokyo Dome, you've already laid your cards out on the table. Thank you for that. And Chris, much like in Fukuoka, at the Tokyo Dome, I'm going to leave you a bloodied mess. Except... It's not just going to be blood. You're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be defeated. And you're going to feel all alone. You know, up until, up, wow, up until now, I've been the best belt machine. And I've done it by putting on the most technically sound athletic contests. These have been stories that come from my heart. And they come from a very dark place. But I've always told these stories with my athleticism. I've never seen violence like this in a New Japan ring. I haven't seen violence like this since I was a kid watching the old territorial wrestling. You just don't see it anymore. Everyone is trying to be the best. Everyone is trying to do it fighting fair and square. Everyone is trying to do it by being a gentleman or a gentlewoman. You reminded me, Chris, pro wrestling at its core is a fight. So the press conference, Chris, I told everyone about how you unlocked my true potential. How you've unlocked something within me that I didn't even know that I had. And that's not a lie. It's true. You reminded me, Chris, that pro wrestling at its core is a fight. I could win best bouts all day. I win them all year, every year, multiple ones a year. This is going to be something different. I'm not going for the athletic, technical performance that you're used to seeing. What I'm going for, Chris, is a fight, man to man, to prove who the stronger one is. So at the press conference, I told everyone there's going to be this new Kenny Omega, one that you've never seen before, 
one that I never thought I'd have a chance to show. And that's the Kenny Omega that's going to show up to the Togi Dome. That's the one that's willing to throw down, that's willing to fight. You know, up until now, I've been known as the best bout machine. Heck, since the year 2008, I've been winning best bout of the year awards every single year. It hasn't stopped. Last year, I cleaned up 10, 12 awards just for various matches that I've had around the world. And this year is no different. But that's just the thing. As of right now, it's all I'm going to be remembered for. I was just a guy in Japan that had some good matches. And you'll live on forever as a legend, a megastar. So maybe at the end of the day, Chris, I'm going to have to thank you because what you've done now is you've unlocked this new Kenny Omega that's going to expand my range. No, you're not going to get the athletic machine that is guaranteed to get a match of the night, match of the year, match of the decade, best match of all time. What you're going to get is you're going to get someone who's willing to fight, someone who's willing to bleed, someone who's willing to die for his dream to change the wrestling world. I've got you to thank for that, Chris. Maybe as a fighter, I'm not as strong as you. I don't even know. I've never done this. But at the Tokyo Dome, I'm going to fight with everything I have. And you're going to have to kill me if you want to win. So Chris Jericho, <laughs> yeah, I heard you at the press conference. You said this was going to be my last match in New Japan. Now, is that because you're going to retire me by physically injuring me? You're going to end my career and my life? Or was it that you're on this mission? You're going to take me back to the promised land. You want me to perform on the grandest stage of them all for the granddaddy of sports entertainment. Is that what it is? Well, let me warn you, Chris. I can't be bought. I can't be reasoned with. My dreams are bigger than money. They're bigger than fame. My goal is to change the wrestling world. You're playing a key role in that, Chris. But once you've served your purpose, <laughs> in fact, you're the one that will no longer be needed. So, Chris, strangely enough, this may be your last match in Japan. Not only that, but Chris, if you're not careful and you push yourself too hard, if you force my hand, this may be your last match ever. Since I won this belt at the G1 Special in USA, I've had the heavy burden of trying to make it mean something. It hasn't been easy. But Chris Jericho, there you came into my life like a heaven sent. Now, suddenly, you've raised the value of the Red Sonia tenfold. This belt is now so valuable, it can dual main event the biggest show of the year. This belt is so valuable that it is the most talked about prize in all of professional wrestling. Yes, Chris, our match is really the hot topic on the wrestling planet. I owe that to you. But keep in mind, Chris, that at the end of the day, in this Change the World Tour that I've got going on, you are merely a support character. And yes, I think even deep down inside, you know it too, that you can't compete head to head with me, that you know you're here for a good time and not a long time, and that even though you're probably getting yourself in the best condition of your life, that you're going to fail. And you're going to go down in a blaze of glory, and people will respect you. People will say, oh my God, you were so close, and you did so great. That was a good match. 
boy, are you tough. But you'll still be a loser. And you'll still, at the end of the day, especially after all the things you've said, after all the things you've done, you're just going to look like a stupid idiot. For almost a decade, I've been wrestling in Japan. And, you know, it was my choice. I wanted to be here. This is where I wanted to have the greatest years of my career. But the undertaking of being a wrestler in Japan, especially coming up through the Indies, it's a lonely journey. And I had no one with me. And I was alone. But just like anyone that's alone, there's opportunities to start fresh. There's opportunities to make new friends. I guess there's opportunities to make new enemies, too. So there were happy times, there were sad times. One by one, as time went on, I lost everything. And in times when I had something that I enjoyed in life, I had to sacrifice it in order to become the best. So when it came time to face Kazuchika Okada at the Tokyo Dome main event, I had nothing left to lose. So I wanted to leave it all in the ring and I was willing to die in front of all the fans at the Tokyo Dome. That could have been my retirement match. I wanted to make sure it was a performance I was proud of. And so when I was fighting Okada, I wanted to show not only the fruits of my labor, I wanted to show the years of my training, the years of hardships, the pain and the loneliness. But I also wanted to channel the motions from a happy place. I didn't want this to be a violent match. I wanted to show the beauty of professional wrestling and just what I was capable of. And so that match became one of the most proud athletic masterpieces in my career. And it sort of started the first big step for the Change the World slogan. Chris Jericho comes along and he's changed the message. He's now taken this thing of beauty that I've tried to recreate and he's turned it into a dark and terrifying place. And I have no choice but to go there with him. I can't lie. I'm a little nervous to walk this path. I don't like violent things. Heck, I don't even know if I can fight. I know that plays into your strengths, Chris. But if we're going to change the world, this is a necessary evil. And so if I have to fight for what I believe in, if I have to fight for my dream to make New Japan worldwide, if I have to fight to prove that Kenny Omega style truly is the best on the planet, beating you at your own game, Chris, is all I can do. So when you're lying there broken, in a heap, a shell of a man that you used to be, reconsidering all of your life's choices, just remember, Chris Jericho, you drew first blood, not me. <laughs>